gallivanting about in the street with your grandfather lying dead and cold upstairs. I don't know. B -b Be off. Be off now. And change your outfit before your Aunt Elizabeth and Uncle Ben come and find you in, in color. What are they coming for anyway? They haven't been here for ages. They're coming to talk over poor Grandpa's affair. Your father sent them a telegram as soon as we found he was dead. Good gracious, it's them? No, thank goodness it's only your father. Not here yet, eh? You can see they aren't, can't you? Now, Victoria, be off upstairs and quick. Put your frog on with a black sack. Grandfather's bureau down here. Are we taking it before Aunt Elizabeth comes? 
No, your grandfather. He gave it to your mother before he died. This morning? Yes. Uh, he was drunk this morning. Hush! You mustn't speak about your grandfather like that. But, shh, but, shh, but, shh. la, 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 la. I thought I'd bring this down as well. I was left with nothing. And this always appealed to me. But that's Grandpa's clock. Shh, shh, shh. Be quiet. It's ours now. Come, Henry, lift your end. And so he's gone at last. Yes, he's gone. He was 72 last Sunday. Now, Amelia, you mustn't. We've all got to die sometime or another. It could have been worse. I don't see how. <laughs> it could have been one of us. <laughs> say.
Didn't you send for him at once? Of course I did. Do you take me for a fool? I sent Henry out at once for Dr. Pringle, but he was out. You should have gone for another, eh, Eliza? Oh, yes, it's a fatal mistake. Don't talk so silly, Elizabeth. What good could a doctor have done? Look at the many cases of a person being restored to life hours after they were thought to be gone. That's if they've been drowned. Your father wasn't drowned, Elizabeth. No, I didn't know your father quite well. But if there was one thing he couldn't bear, it was water. Ha 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 I'm sure he wants to dance regular enough. And if he did take a drop too much, we're not dwell on that now. Father had been married this morning. He went out soon after breakfast to pay his insurance. My word, it's a good thing he did. Oh, to have gone without paying his premium. Well, he must have been to the Ringo Bells afterwards, for he came in as merry as a sand boy. I says, we're only waiting on Henry to start dinner. Dinner? He says, I don't want no dinner. I'm going to bed. And when I came in, he was undressed, snug in bed. Did he recognize you? Yes, he spoke to me. What did he say? Henry, would you take off my boots? I, for, I forgot before I got into bed. He got him off all right. And, and when we finished dinner, I thought I'd take up a bit of something on a tray. He was lying there as if he was asleep. So I put the tray down on the drawer. Uh, I, I mean, on the chest of drawers, and went to waken him. He was quite cold. He was gone. There what? There wasn't any doubt. I always knew he'd go sudden in the end. Well, would you like to go up and look at him now, or shall we have tea? What do you say, Ben? Uh, I'm not Well, then. We may as well have tea first. One thing we may as well decide now is the verse of the evening newspaper. I was thinking of that. What would you put? At the residence of his daughter, 235 Upper Cornbank Street, etc. And a bit of poetry. It's more for the look of things. I always fancy a loving husband, a kind father, and a faithful friend. Do you think that's right? I don't think so. I like never forgotten. It's refined. I saw something in the evening news. It rhymed. Despised and forgotten, to some you may be, the spot that contains you is sacred to eat. That'll never do! It's in the papers! But you wouldn't say it. We want a verse. This is how much we love him. It refers to all his good qualities. That'll cost a good lot. Well, we'll think about it after tea, and then we'll look through the fits and things. There's all that furniture. Up in his room. There's no jewelry or valuables of that. Except his golden watch. He promised that to our Jimmy. Promise your Jimmy? I never heard of that. Oh, but he did, Amelia. He was living with us. He was very fond of our Jimmy. Well, I don't know. Anyhow, did you get the receipt for the premium he paid this morning? I've not seen it. Mother! I don't think Grandpa wants his insurance this morning. He went out. Yes, but he met old Mr. Tattersall down the street, and they went past St. Philip's Church. And then to the ring of bells I'll be the ring of bells That public house that John Shark's widow keeps. He's always hanging around there. Oh, if he hasn't paid it, do you think he hasn't paid it? 
Was it overdue? I think it was overdue. He's not paid it. I know it. He's not paid it. That drunken old beggar. He's done it just to annoy us. After all I've done for him, having put up with him in this house for three years, it's nothing short of swindling. I had to put up with him for five years. And you were trying to turn him over to us all the time. We don't know for certain if he's paid his premium or not. I do. It's come over me all at once that he hasn't. Victoria, run upstairs and fetch the bunch of keys that's on your grandpa's dressing table. In grandpa's room? Yes. I, I don't want to. Don't talk to the city. There's no one that can hurt you. Mm. We'll see if he's locked or seat up in his bureau. And where? Did this day? <laughs> Amelia, I like it. Oh, um, Henry picked it up one day. Where? At an auction. Well, well, where did I pick it up again, Amelia? Yes, at an auction. It looks secondhand. Don't show your ignorance, Ben. Look at these old masters. Mother, mother! What is it, child? Grandpa's getting up. What? What do you say? Grandpa's getting up. The child's crazy. Don't talk so silly. Don't you know your grandpa's dead? No, no, I saw him. He's getting up. You'd better go up and sit for yourself, Amelia. Uh, here, come with me, Henry. Older than you? 
Yes. Five years. Are you going to the funeral? Oh, yes. No, no! no! Oh, no, of course not. Well, I suppose you've only been waiting for me to begin. Tea? I'm feeling hungry. I'll make tea. Come along now, sit you down. Leaving all of my things, whoever I am with when I die. 
How does that strike you? It's a bit of a lottery. And who do you intend to live with from now on, Father? I'm just coming to that. You know, Father, it's quite time you came to live with us again. We make you very comfortable. No, he's not been with us as long as he was with you. I may be wrong, Amelia, but I don't think Father will fancy living with you from after what happened today. So you'd like to have me again, Lizzie? You know we're ready for you to come and live with us for as long as you need. And what do you say to that, Amelia? All I can say is that Elizabeth has changed her mind in the last two years. Father, do you know what the quarrel between us is about? Amelia, don't be a fool. Sit down. Oh, no. We quarreled because Elizabeth said she had enough of you to last a lifetime, and we got to keep you. It seems to me that neither of you has a cause to be proud about the way you treated me. If I've done anything wrong, I'm sorry for it. And I can say more of that, too. It's a bit too late to say it now. No. 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 No, no Grandfather. You both say that because where I'll be leaving my money. Well, since you don't want me, I'll go to someone that does. Come, Mr. Merriweather. You've got to live with one of your daughters. On Monday, I got three things to do. I got to go to the lawyers and alter my will. I got to go to the insurance office and pay my premium. And I got to go to St. Philip's Church and get married. What? Get married? He's out of his senses. I said I'm going to get married. Who to? To Mrs. John Truck, who keeps the Ringo Bell. We had it fixed up a good while now, but I was keeping it a pleasant surprise. We shall be very glad to see you at the ceremony. Till Monday then, 12 o'clock at St. Philip's Church. Yeah.